nós não passamos a mão na cabeça de ninguém. Eu sou favorável à tortura, tu sabe disso. Eu sei o que é passar fome. Imagine that Lula uh, could send me to puta que pariu. Between 1994 and 2014, Brazilian politics at the national level was dominated by two groups, the Workers' Party to the left of the center and the Social Democracy Party to the right of the center. At first, the center-right seemed to be the dominating force. President Fernando Henrique Cardoso won two elections in 1994 and 1998 without the need of a runoff stage. In 1995, a member of the cabinet even said that the Social Democrats would rule the country for at least 20 years. After eight years, however, the party was removed from power as Brazilians chose to elect Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva in 2002. And truth be told, after that they were only competitive once in 2014. Senator Aécio Neves was on the cusp of snatching the presidency after a hard-fought campaign against then-president Dilma Rousseff, but he felt just short of it. Senator Neves seemed like the future of the country center right. But now he and many of the party's leaders are either tarnished by corruption scandals or have fallen into irrelevance. The Workers' Party and Lula remained the dominant force to the left, but the center right was kicked to the curb by Jair Bolsonaro and his extreme-right politics. How did a party that was Brazil's dominant force just 20 years ago get so derailed? That's what we are going to talk about this week in Explaining Brazil. My name is Gustavo Ribeiro from the Brazilian Report. <music> With me, as usual, is Diogo Rodrigues, staff writer of the Brazilian Report. Hello, Diogo. Hello, Gustavo. Diogo, since 1994, the Social Democrats have never fared worse than runner-up in presidential elections. Over the same time span, they have also controlled the state government of São Paulo, which is by far the most challenging administration after the federal government. But now, Geraldo Alckmin, who is their presidential candidate, is polling at 8% and they could very well lose the gubernatorial race in Sao Paulo. What the hell is going on with the Social Democracy Party? Well, Gustavo, um, I think there are two things that we can talk about. The m missed opportunities that the, the Social Democratic Party had uh, along these, uh, in the last 20 years, and what happened after the 2014 election. Tasso Gereissati, who was the president of the Social Democratic Party, said that the party committed a series of memorable mistakes since 2014. Let's start with that. Uh, one of the, the first one, he says, was to question the, the result of the election in which Dilma Rousseff won from the Workers' Party. Uh, that was, you know, that was something that was damaging to Brazilian democracy, and that starts to explain a little bit of how the uh, the party's image, uh, got, you know, was a little bit tarnished. And it's funny because um, now he admits that this was a mistake, and uh, a couple of years ago when the impeachment was carried out, popular support was pro impeachment, but now. Opinion polls shows that 50% of Brazilians believe it was a coup. It was not legitimate. Exactly. Their narrative didn't stick. I mean, at the time, people were convinced, but now they noticed that, you know, some things were made just for political, pol political interest. That's the interpretation, that the common good was not respected. And he says that, that was, there's another mistake that they made, that the Social Democratic Party started to vote against economic and social measures Uh, that the, the Workers' Party proposed just to be against the Workers' Party, just to be in opposition. And that was another thing that, you know, was damaging to, to their image. Yeah, especially because it was things that they have had historically defended, like uh, stricter rules for pensions, uh, taxes to help fund the healthcare system, which they defended during their eight years in government. And then, like you said, just for for the sake of being against the workers party they voted nay when they had the chance exactly and uh and he goes on i mean there's a third mistake that he lists here and that's i think it's, it might be the biggest one which is they joined michel temer's government he was dilma rousseff's vice president he took over after she was impeached 
and they supported his government. They had several, uh, several of their staff was part of the government. They had a few ministers, secretaries, and uh, you know, as we know now, Temer's government is very unpopular. Three percent approval rating. <laughs> very unpopular. I mean, it has taken some very controversial actions. It has made some reforms that were not put into discussion with the whole country. So, you know, that's a little bit of the explanation of why the, the Social Democratic Party is such a, a low point in his life right now. These mistakes that you mentioned, the fact that they voted against things that they had defended in the past, for me, um, illustrate an identity crisis that for me starts in 2003 when Lula steps into office. Because until that point... The Social Democrats were uh, a centrist, le right-leaning force, but at the center, they had put forward some social programs, not to the scale that uh, the Workers' Party uh, put forward during Lula's years, but they had implemented a lot of this stuff. They had this social democratic ideal. And after the Workers' Party gets to power and becomes also a centrist party but left-leaning they leave no room in, in terms of uh, the electoral market which voters should they get to the centrist voters went all to the workers party so if you uh, follow the trajectory and the behavior of uh, social democratic presidential candidates since 2002 you see a shift to the a steep shift to the right in 2002 Lula and then candidate Jose Serra are not that different in terms of what they propose objectively what they propose in 2006 uh, the social democrats come with a more hard on crime stance in 2010 they uh, go after Dilma Rousseff with abortion uh, claims that she is pro-abortion and then uh, the candidate which was once again José Serra appears all the time uh, in churches and even if he's not a religious man and then in 2014 is a more radical shift which is we are anti-workers party and that's our platform point yeah, I think you're right, and that explains uh, why uh, the party is having a hard time finding a, a, like an electoral basis because they were, you know, they were very uh, shy to ad admit they, that they had become a right wing party, a center right, but a right wing party, and they were not clear enough on that, on, in my opinion. And that's why Jair Bolsonaro is thriving right now because the country is very polarized. But and people who are on the right wing spectrum do not see the the social democratic party as a party that represents their values. So they're they're in the middle of a of a they're in the crossfire. Yeah, too liberal for conservatives, too conservative for liberals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it took us just nine minutes to talk about Jair Bolsonaro. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering when Bolsonaro would come up. Uh, I think nine minutes. We well, he's the man of the hour. Yeah, we held ourselves. Yeah, good. We control ourselves. <laughs> but speaking of Bolsonaro, because this is Im important, uh, we talk about Bolsonaro, we talk about his anti-democratic rant, and we talk about the fact that he questions the leg legitimacy of the electoral process. And he says that even if he wins, it will not be a very clear uh, election. That's because he says that our electronic voting system is not to be trusted. That didn't start with Bolsonaro. That became a mainstream thing in Brazilian politics, thanks to the Social Democrats. Yes, I mean he's just surfing a wave that was, you know, was you know just forming before he even uh, was seen as someone viable to win an election. So uh, I mean, it can all it can't all be blamed on him. He's just uh, he's just you know taking these these claims and these conspiracy theories to an, uh, an extreme that the Social Democratic Party didn't have the guts to to take, and uh, he you know he's just enjoying whatever was put you know was built for him, and he's doing that with a lot of skill, unfortunately. And even within the Social Democrat Democracy Party. A lot of people are trying to attach themselves to Bolsonaro's image in order to 
to get more electoral to, to raise their electoral stock. Yes, you're talking about uh, João Doria, who is running for São Paulo's government and the uh, Social Democratic ticket. And you know, we had some news that he was, you know, communicating with Bolsonaro's staff. And that is that means that he's backstabbing his political uh, well mentor, his Geraldo Alckmin, who took him to the PSDB, to the Social Democratic Party, to be a candidate uh, back in 2016 when the when he was elected mayor of São Paulo. And that's another problem within the Social Democratic Party. They have too many internal disputes, yeah. and you, you never know who is going to you know turn on who. And there's not not a clear leadership in the party. They're right more uh, preoccupied in not letting their internal adversary have power than to win <laughs> the election. Exactly, and that you know that makes for a weak party, and uh, you know that's the difference um, between the, the the social democratic party and the workers party. Yeah. That you know within the workers party, you know that there's there's a lot of discipline. I mean, there are conflicts. But they have a mainstream, uh, what's, let's say, current that, you know, dominates the, the, the party as a whole. And, you know, they can act as a party uh, to the outside, like you said. Yeah. If, even if they want to kill themselves internally to the outside world, they are united front. and uh, Yeah, they're disciplined. Exactly. No, and João Doria, we mentioned it. His very history within the Social Democracy Party explains how divided the, the party is because well, social democrats love to portray themselves as developed minds from the first world, which very democratic ways of doing politics. And they had primaries, which are not present in every Brazilian uh, party. And Geraldo Alckmin, then governor of São Paulo, imploded the, the party's chapter in São Paulo in order to push for João Doria. There was a lot of evidence of voter fraud with the primaries in order to affirm Alckmin's control of the party and to push Geraldo Alckmin, uh, which was, uh, to push João Doria, which was, who was not a very popular guy within the party. And now he, uh, these divisions are showing, right? Yes. And, you know, that created a very, a very uh, dangerous environment for the the Social Democratic Party, because now they're they're risking losing the the state of São Paulo because candidate Paul Scaffi is is currently you know uh, polling in, in first place and seems that they can beat Doria in the second round. And, and uh, Paul Scaff, just for context, oh yeah. is uh, the president of the uh, union of industries of São Paulo. Yeah, the Industry Association of the State of São Paulo. He's a very wealthy guy, very well. Uh, with, with with great connections, and he's had a, a political aspiration, f you know, for quite some time, and now he's getting close to you know being elected governor, and he's from the MDB, the Brazilian Democratic Movement, the Brazilian Democratic Movement, and you know, and he's going to. He seems like he can. He has the potential to snatch away the the government of São Paulo from the PSDB. So the PSDB is, is looking at, at the possibility of losing São Paulo and having a presidential candidate that is not even going to make it to the second uh, term, so second round. So and what happens to the party if that is the case? Well, that is a good question. I mean, they're going to lose national relevance as as they have already lost in the past few years, and if they don't do anything about it, if they don't try to, you know. Uh, gather themselves again I, th I think they're going to become a small party or a relevant party nationally because that's what it all points to right now but even if they hold to Sao Paulo the party has already changed right it would not be the same party founded by Fernando Henrique Cardoso in the late 80s no, I mean, the, the Social Democratic Party was a very important party in the beginning of the Brazilian democracy and the, the, the New Republic. I mean, they had leaderships like Mario Covas, which was, he, he, was a, he was a conciliator, and he was very well respected by a, every other politician in Brazil and in Sao Paulo. He was governor of Sao Paulo for two terms. He was not center-left, but he had a social mind, he, has, he had social concern. He managed to balance... The liberal program that the the Social Democratic Party had with social concerns that was 
and he was very popular for it and very well respected for it. And now we see a party that has no clear leadership. I mean, the last, the, the one of the last leaders, Aysio Nevis, is being investigated for several uh, cases of corruption. And now he, in order not to lose his, you know, his polit- politician status, he decided to downgrade himself from senator to to uh, congressman. He's running for Congress right now. He decided not to try to reelect himself as senator for the state of Minas Gerais. And it, it, it's funny because the problem they they faced after the Workers' Party displaced them from the center might not even be there for them because now leaders like João Doria, which are ultra neoliberal, they they already have another party. They have like this new party called the Novo, which defends that. So they might once again find themselves not knowing where to stand even before this election uh, we had uh, you know some news or some rumors that João Doria was going to leave the social democratic party he I, th- I think he threatened to leave uh, unless he had you know what he wanted to the, uh, inside the party so i mean uh, the PSTB the social democratic party now has to decide what they want to be in the future and it's not clear for anybody what they can be in in a country like we see today in this party that became notable for its internal disputes after October the 7th, it might not be anything left for people to dispute. Exactly. Diogo, thank you very much. Thank you. If you like this podcast, please take a look at our website. It's Brazilian.report. Every day we have new content about Brazil's politics, economics, and society. We also have exclusive newsletter services if you want to be briefed on what's going on in Brazil before starting your day. Subscribe now to our free trial and enjoy all of our content for 14 days. It's really free. You don't have to put any credit card information. You can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter. Our handle is at Brazilian Report. That's all for now. See you next week. Mm-hmm.